um, compliment of the season to you. It's a new year, and uh, I hope that um, 2023 was cool for you. For me, yeah, it was fine, and we hope for a better 2024. Um, very quickly, I'm currently on site, and I like to play around what we should expect, what we should expect on our building project in 2024. What we should expect in our building project, and um, paying attention to what um, the reality of the economy in our nation, that's Nigeria, the reality of the economy of our nation, and how it is affecting um, the production of building materials, and also the prices of the building materials as well. Um, for now, um, the prices of um, the building materials varies for example, for the rods, that's 16 mm. Um, some people are selling for 9,500. Some are selling for 10,500. Um, for 12 mm, some are selling for um, 6,000. Some are selling for 5,500. For 8 mm, some are selling for 3,800. Some are selling for 2,900. Uh, but I like to pay attention on the road and uh, why because um in the aspect of the road we have the standard roads we have the substandard road we have the local road but you would not know you would not know all you just have to do is to probably go to the vendor that sells the road and tell them i want to buy 16 mm and then they will give you 16 mm but guess what we have the standard 16 mm and we have the local 16 so take notes whenever you are going to buy so somebody may give you a, a quotation for probably 16 mm for 10,500 and then another quotation for that same 16 mm for 9,500 please note the difference too and then don't allow anybody to collect your money uh probably collect for 10,500 and then go and buy um the one of 9,500 yes these roads they vary in their quality um somebody may ask that victor does it mean um 16 mm road local 16 mm standard are they not the same thing they are not the same thing the quality of those roads are different the quality of the standard 16 mm is quite different from the quality of the local 16. so if you go to any outlet a vendor that you want to buy a road in short, they'll be open to you. They'll tell you, which one do you want to buy? You want to buy the standard or you want to buy the local, which you can also call the substandard. Please take note of that. Secondly, is the aspect of the cement. Uh, for those who are into the cement business, they may be angry at this point, but my duty is to tell the truth. The aspect of the cement, a lot of people do rebargain. So, I mean, when I say rebargain, I mean to say that the buy the cement they open the cement, they take some quantity from that bag, they seal it up bag again, and that's how they do it. They do rebagging. So, for uh, those of us who calculate, we calculate that for one bag of cement, uh, it should um, carry out so 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 numbers of work for you on site. Please note that there are times where maybe you actually needed five bags of cement to carry out a project tax. It would be wise of you to use six bags. Please take note. If there's a project tax that you're supposed to use five bags of cement, you can use six bags. That six bags can help to complement the quantity that they've removed from your cement. You cannot fight it. It is what the reality of our nation, we don't have um, standard government agencies that can help us monitor through. So it's our duty to also make adjustments when needed. So for those of you that like to mold block and you say, ah, from one bag of cement, six inches, give me 40 blocks. So you know. So if you are calculating one bag of cement, know that that cement is no longer one bag. You're getting it. If you're calculating your one bag of cement, know that that cement is no longer one bag. So you know how to make your adjustment. Any wise project owner or a wise project manager will study the reality of 
what the building environment is gradually becoming and then ensure that you still find a way to promote and project standardization in whatever you are doing. So don't say, ah, because uh, the client said that uh, the client want 35 bags, want 35 bags of blocks from one bag of cement, uh, let me just do it. No. As a project manager or you're the one handling the project, it's your duty to assess. So once you see, you advise the client. Advise the client. If you see that um, what you're trying to advise the client is what, and the client is objecting that, no, I don't want it like that. You are saying that is what can, you can control. You can continue with the job. But if you see that it's what you cannot control, that at the end of the day, it may end up or it may, it may result to what may become disastrous. I would advise you pull out of that job. Reasons being that if you continue that job and that job has issues tomorrow, the client will come back to you and say, Victor, I paid you for the job. Nobody will know that you were advising the client while you guys were working on the project. And then for the client as well, please, I want to beg you. In as much as, yes, you go online to get information, also find someone you can listen to that is handling your job. If there's anyone you can listen to, find that person and ensure that you work on trust. Otherwise, if you follow all the informations you get online, they may not be accurate for your particular project. They may not be accurate for your particular project. Please take note of that. And then for those of us who actually have resumed site um, fully, I want to beg, especially project managers, engineers, and the rest of us, I want to beg that we do the right thing on the site. Trust me, there are a whole lot of people who are willing to invest, willing to invest, and they are actually watching our attitudes and how um, knowledgeable we are in terms of handling the project. Uh, so I appeal to you, as we move in 2024, please do the right thing. And then to you, the client, to you, the client, please ensure that you know exactly what you want to achieve on your site. Don't resume your site without knowing where you are going to. It's very important. What I mean where you are going to, do your architectural design. Let me, let me stress this. If you are just starting your building project in 2024, go and do your architectural design before you start your building project. Tell your engineer or the project manager, this is what I want to build. You people should agree on what you want to build. Don't just jump to the site. Do your architectural design very well. It is from that architectural design that your engineer or your project manager or the quantity survey, whoever is handling your job, can now cost your project. I say, okay, fine, this is what we actually need to achieve your building project. I said something while I was rounding up um, 2023, and I said that for those of us who actually set out goals to be achieved in 2023, did you actually meet those goals? When I mean those goals, I mean your building goals. Now, this is 2024. It is quite important that if you did not set your goal in 2023, please set your goal for your project in 2024. Tell yourself that in 2024, I want to build my house from this stage to this stage. Tell yourself in 2024, this is exactly what I want to achieve on my project in 2024. It's very, very important. And for those of us who set our goals in 2023 and we are still on our project in 2024, it's very important that you do a review of what was achieved in 2023. Very important. Do a review of what you achieved in 2023. What was the budget for 2023? Did you surpass the budget or did you spend less? It will help you identify how best you manage your project in 2023. And this is 2024. I, I wish you all the best as you resume your project in 2024. Thank you. Don't forget that my name is Simon Victor Olise. And for those who desire to reach out to us, our contact is open for you 07063 
0701515158. I roll over again 0706315158. Thank you and God bless you. Compliments of the season to you. Thank you.